Okay, party people. It's DK here at Mr. V Amps. Again, last night I made a video just complaining about how capacitor testers are a pain in the butt. And there's actually somebody, one of our commenters, mentioned there is a type of capacitor tester I don't have here, and it's what we refer to as a leakage tester. And there's a little bit of there. Th this this has some leakage testing capability, but the one I really want. Um, the only one I got um, was uh, impractically repairable, so still hunting on that. So let's talk about what these testers actually test for and uh, how they test for it. I think that's uh, what we want to do. So this is ESR. ESR is, a, is equivalent series resistance, okay? Now capacitors ideally should have no resistance to an AC signal. Well, anyway, um, the idea is is with the capacitor, if we think of it as sort of a bucket of water, but it's not. It's a bucket that holds electrons. When we fill it up or we drain it out, there's going to be some resistance in there. And the less resistance we have to that, the lower the ESR would be. So generally, in an audio circuit, we would be using these as a bypass capacitor to allow AC audio signal through them. It would go in through the cathode and out through the anode, and there would be a resistance associated with that. And if this capacitor becomes a higher series resistance, the tone will change and it'll probably begin to uh, become weaker and weaker. Now, <clears throat> the ESR tester that will test our 10 microfarad capacitor here, check that. You can see this is a brand new cap that hasn't really had any hours on it, and it is checking and showing the ESR as 0.8 with, uh, and it says that if this cap is less than 200 microfarad, it would be considered acceptable, which it, it is. It's only a 10 microfarad. This tester is using a AC signal. I believe they said it's 100 kilohertz. And if I were to hook my little mini scope, yes, I have a big scope for big boys, but we're not using it today. It's a little bit more difficult to film. You can see, hopefully, there is an AC waveform there and it is actually putting out that sine wave quickly into, let's see if we can adjust the, yeah, so it's putting a sine wave in there. It's like putting a fast high-pitched audio signal into the capacitor and measuring the resistance to that audio signal. So, now, what would the problem with high ESR be? or what would happen here. Well, if we know about resistance, right, resistance generates heat, right? So in the case of these little boys that aren't seeing a lot of voltage or anything, um, it would probably just be in an audio circuit, it would probably be a duller sound or a fading sound or a low sound. And you'll find if you ever watch uh, any of the radio repair videos or stuff like that, you'll get a radio that's really quiet or silent or and it's because the capacitors have dried out gone high ESR and audio signal is not able to pass through it now with our bigger capacitors and power supplies and things like that especially as smoothing capacitors filter capacitors or in switch mode capacitors where they have to switch very very fast resistance creates heat heat creates damage and then the cap goes boom and game over. <coughs> now, this tester that I showed, which these are actually available, they're darn expensive though. Fortunately, I was able to buy this at an estate where I could afford it. This quickly will measure DCR, DC resistance. Beep. So if you see this yellow light for that split second, it checks DC resistance. And then we'll check the 
ESR, and this meter and that meter actually generally agree with each other. The little meter we looked at first said 0.8 and this one has an increment it can choose between 0.75 and 1 and it chose 1 which you know considering if the other one says 0.8 I'll ride with that now DC resistance DC resistance if I were to <coughs> hook a battery to this positive to positive negative to negative current from my battery would flow into my capacitor until my capacitor is full and then my capacitor should cut off and resist DC resistance of this capacitor should essentially reach infinity at its rated voltage which is I believe this is a 50 volt capacitor yeah this is a 50 volt capacitor so up to 50 volts which again you're better off to run these at a little bit lower voltage say maybe 30 volts 35 volts would be more realistic up to 50 volts this capacitor should pass no current whatsoever when it's charged um, if it was still passing a little bit of current it would be considered leakage and we throw capacitors away because they have problems with leakage and there's a gentleman who bought a whole bunch of capacitors dirt cheap off of AliExpress and began to test all of these 16 volt capacitors with actual 16 volts and all of a sudden they began to leak and then boom they exploded because they were <clears throat> mismarked um, and somebody apparently wants to talk to me so if the DC resistance of a capacitor when it is charged um, is low low DC resistance that means the cap really isn't charging it's really leaking it's not taking a charge and it could possibly be shorted which is how this tester caught the um, caught the bad capacitor our ohm meter our classic ohm meter here actually is for measuring DC resistance like we use on resistors and I think yesterday's shorted capacitor was here and if I try to measure its DC resistance it stays at zero kilo ohms I don't know that's showing up there so this is a shorted capacitor and of course this caught it very very quickly now if I take one of my two 10 ohm this one's used this one's a little bit leakier but not much and I were to check my resistance here my DC resistance with my voltmeter which is applicable it's gonna work on small caps on big caps it takes forever and I measure my DC resistance I would get infinity as you can see it's showing overload infinite can't uh, can't take any more yeah please turn me off that that's the beep meter to say that you left it on and let's check this one I should have again infinite resistance from this capacitor and I do so this one is certainly not DC leaking now if I were to touch the contacts together and short the capacitor out amongst itself that should discharge the cap and maybe just maybe our low voltmeter will give a jump while it's charging and it did not because this cap is so small it took no time whatsoever to charge but if I take my big cap for example and I test the DC resistance we will see the value start low and we watch it climb so there we go so we climbed up to essentially off the 2 kilo ohm scale and now we're up to over 20 kilo ohms of resistance put it up a scale we're over let's see there's 199 there's 200 kilo ohms of resistance and we are almost almost at 2 mega ohms of resistance and uh, 2 mega ohms is a lot a lot of resistance so there's a teeny bit of DC leakage here but not a 
not enough to count. This still should be usable in a circuit. Let's see what our new capacitor does on a test like that. Yeah, so this capacitor here still has less than 2 mega ohms of DC resistance. So, the perfect capacitor, when it is charged, will have a DC resistance of infinity, but a AC resistance, or an ESR, equivalent series resistance, of zero. None of them exist. Now this tester, which I showed before, what is this actually doing? This one will measure capacitance, actually as can this one if I put it into capacitance mode. It can measure up to 20 microfarad capacitors. And effectively what it will do is it will charge said capacitor up until it is full, and then it will stop. And I believe, if I remember right, this cap checker on this is broken. <laughs> I think it is. I used to use it, but it doesn't matter. We don't use that because we have this. <clears throat> what this unit does is this is actually a component identifier, so it can detect a lot of different types of transistors and resistors, and it looks for what you have in the circuit. And the method that it determines the capacitance of your capacitor is by charging it up. So it will charge up your capacitor with pretty darn low voltage and then measure how much current went into the capacitor and then read you a result. And it tries to take a resistance reading at the same time. So our 10 microfarad capacitor is said to have a capacitance of 11 0.1 microfarad, which is within tolerance, and it thinks the ESR is at 1.2 ohms, which isn't too far off of our other meters. This one thought, this one says 1, which it doesn't give a super detail, and this one said 0 0.8 something. So everything's pretty much in accordance. I have no major concern for this, other than our battery's starting to die here, so maybe I need to put a new battery in it. The last type of tester that I don't have here, which I would... You've seen some other radio techs and things use it. It's called a leakage tester. And the idea is, at very low voltage, like battery level voltage, these type of capacitors are capable of not leaking at up to 50 volts, allegedly. Again, we could test them. But uh, certain capacitors are good for... 100 volts, 150, 100, or actually it's usually 160, right? Let's see, it. The, it's usually 16 volts, then 25, then 50, then I've seen 63, um, then usually maybe 80, 100, 160, 200-ish uh, volts, something like that, but up to 630 generally for a lot of these uh, capacitors. And these testers will put up to 500 volts across some of these. Now, obviously this one, you wouldn't want to put more than 50 volts on it when you test it, but it would actually apply a full DC push to this at 50 volts and see if it is leaking. It would essentially check for low DC resistance. Ideally, the DC resistance would be infinity but it might not always be. And that's the nice thing about the, that type of tester, the high power tester, is specifically for when you're working with tube circuits because you have a lot of high voltage in there. You'll have your film capacitor that is supposed to be good for 400 volts, 500 volts, 630 volts. And uh, in certain parts that capacitor is actually seeing three, four, five hundred volts in the circuit. And so those are the ones that are a little more critical to test for leakage. Um, you don't you don't necessarily have to have to have to have one of those because you can sniff out leakage a lot of times with one of your ordinary meters. <clears throat> for example, in a bi bypass capacitor, you should see ideally 
zero volts on your grid coming through um, the capacitor and you can find if there's voltage there you know it's leaking but the um, the old school leakage testers which would be like a Heath kit or an ICO or something like that um, I do want one of those and the one I did have uh, had a destroyed transformer so um, I sent it along to somebody who could use it for parts to fix another one they were trying to salvage but I will find one there will be a estate sale for a radio technician here sometime so hopefully I explained what we're testing so ESR AC resistance audio signal is f and for switching power supplies does this capacitor have resistance to charge and discharge and so will it be heating up and or affecting our audio signal this one does the same thing it checks the uh, <clears throat> ESR the AC resistance and it looks to see if the DC resistance is high enough that the capacitor after it's charged is not leaking again this is not working at a high voltage but it will at least tell you if the capacitor is being a capacitor and isn't shorted and then this one will actually charge said capacitor and attempt to tell you its approximate capacity one of the things you will see with these type of testers if you do use these and I love these things um, not because they're the greatest thing in the world for testing capacitors but for the most part you can stick unknown transistors in it and it'll tell you like where the, the collector and the base and the emitter are and all of that kind of stuff so very very helpful um, for all kinds of electronic components but wh where was it yes in these if you have a 10 microfarad capacitor and you check it and it says somewhere between 9 and 12 microfarad it's probably just fine the tolerance on these is usually plus 20 minus 10 so since we all have 10 fingers we like 10 as number if this is a 10 the tolerance would be to be 9 microfarad minimum and 12 microfarad maximum and this checked at approximately 11 so fine no problems here um, if you see a capacitor that is showing way over its rated way over which would be like this one is starting to get there it's not there but it's starting to get there this is supposed to be 2200 microfarad that's why it takes longer to test it and as you can see it actually measures a very beautiful 22 uh, 2280 so this one's actually looking really good but there have been times where if I would put this in and it would say something like 3000 microfarad it's not like the capacitor managed to magically get a bigger charge capability over time as we are charging it it is actually leaking out so it took more charge more electrons out of my battery to fill that capacitor and make it stop charging than it should have so thus the capacitor is leaky so if you have one of these which I think everybody should probably get one considering they're only 20 25 dollars um, if your capacitor reads way over capacity or way under capacity time to replace it so hopefully that explains more so what these testers do as opposed to me just complaining the capacitors are a pain in my butt <laughs>